Hey there, my name is Marcus, and I've got a story that'll make your hair stand on end. But let me back up a bit and tell you how it all started. I've always been drawn to the night. Maybe it's because I grew up in a rough neighborhood, where the only time you felt safe was when the sun went down. So when I got the job as a security guard, working the night shift seemed like a natural fit. I liked the solitude, the quiet of the city streets when everyone else was tucked away in their beds. Yet, it's not the most glamorous job, but it pays the bills, you know? Anyway, Brooksville's usually a pretty lively place, but when the solar eclipse rolled around, things took a turn for the weird. The whole city was buzzing with excitement and a bit of nervous energy, if you catch my drift. Now, I've always been a bit of a night owl, so I was out on patrol during the night shift when the eclipse hit. As the moon slipped in front of the sun, the city plunged into darkness, and that's when things got interesting. I started noticing these strange shadows moving around, that quiet was shattered by something far more sinister than anything I'd ever encountered before. Those shadows moving on their own, twisting and turning like they had a life of their own it was like something out of a nightmare. It was creepy, to say the least. But being the curious guy I am, I decided to investigate, even though every instinct in my body was screaming at me to run the other way. But I couldn't shake the feeling that if I didn't do something, Whatever was happening would only get worse. So I followed those shadows to the warehouse, my heart pounding in my chest with every step. And when I saw those cultists performing their dark rituals in the flickering candlelight, I knew I was in way over my head. There were these cloaked figures, chanting and carrying on like something out of a horror movie. They were up to no good, that much was clear. And then I saw that they were about to sacrifice someone right there in front of me. I couldn't just stand there and do nothing while they sacrificed some poor soul to their twisted god. So I did what any decent person would do I intervened. It was chaos, let me tell you. They weren't about to let me ruin their fun that easily. The cultists turned on me in an instant, their eyes filled with madness as they lunged at me with knives drawn. I barely managed to escape with my life, ducking and weaving through the maze of corridors as they pursued me relentlessly. But just when I thought I was done for, the eclipse ended, and sunlight flooded the room, banishing the darkness and giving me a chance to escape. I stumbled out of that warehouse, shaken but alive, and called the police to tell them what I'd seen. They arrived on the scene just in time to catch the cultists in the act. And before long, the whole thing was over. But the memory of that night still haunts me, lurking in the back of my mind like a shadow waiting to pounce. I don't know what those cultists were up to, or why they targeted that poor soul for sacrifice. And I'm not sure I want to know. Some things are better left in the dark, where they belong. But one thing's for sure I'll never forget the terror of that night, or the darkness that lurks just beyond the edge of our reality, waiting for its chance to strike again. Hey everyone, I am Sarah. Please grab a blanket and a flashlight, because I've got a story that'll send shivers down your spine. It all started on the day of the solar eclipse, when I decided to embark on a camping trip to Whispering Pines National Park. The allure of witnessing the celestial phenomenon in the heart of nature was too enticing to resist. As I arrived at the park, I was immediately struck by its pristine beauty. Towering trees stretched towards the sky, their leaves whispering secrets in the gentle breeze. The air was alive with the sounds of birdsong and rustling leaves, creating a symphony of nature that seemed to welcome me with open arms. Setting up camp near a babbling brook, I couldn't help but feel a sense of peace wash over me. The world outside seemed to fade away as I immersed myself in the tranquility of the forest. But as the day wore on and the sun began its descent towards the horizon, a subtle shift occurred in the atmosphere. 
The once vibrant colors of the forest began to dull, and an unsettling stillness settled over the landscape. Undeterred by the eerie ambience, I set out to explore the wilderness surrounding my campsite. The trail wound its way through dense undergrowth, dappled sunlight filtering through the canopy above. As I walked, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. Every snap of a twig or rustle of leaves sent a chill down my spine, and I found myself glancing nervously over my shoulder, half expecting to see someone or something lurking in the shadows. Eventually, I stumbled upon an old cemetery hidden deep within the forest. The headstones, weathered and moss-covered, stood like silent sentinels in the fading light. Goosebumps prickled my skin as I approached, the hairs on the back of my neck standing on end. Despite my growing unease, I couldn't resist the pull of curiosity. I wandered among the graves, tracing my fingers over the worn inscriptions, each one a testament to lives long forgotten. But as the shadows lengthened and the air grew colder, I knew it was time to return to camp. As night fell and the eclipse drew near, I huddled by the campfire, the flickering flames casting eerie shadows across the forest floor. The sky darkened as the moon slid in front of the sun, a hushed silence falling over the park. It was then that the first strange occurrence happened. A low, guttural growl echoed through the trees, sending a shiver down my spine. I glanced around but saw nothing out of the ordinary. Chalking it up to my imagination, I tried to focus on the celestial spectacle unfolding above. But as the eclipse reached its peak, things took a turn for the sinister. The shadows seemed to come alive, twisting and writhing in the darkness like malevolent specters. I watched in horror as the trees swayed unnaturally, their branches reaching out like gnarled fingers grasping for purchase. Panic gnawed at the edges of my mind as I realized I was not alone. I could sense a presence lurking just beyond the edge of the clearing, its eyes fixed on me with a hunger that sent a cold shiver down my spine. Desperate to escape the suffocating grip of fear, I retreated to the safety of my tent, heart hammering in my chest. But sleep eluded me as strange noises echoed through the darkness, the snap of twigs, the rustle of leaves, the soft padding of footsteps drawing ever closer. And then, just as I thought I couldn't bear it any longer, it happened. A blood-curdling howl tore through the night, so close I could almost feel its hot breath on my neck. With a strangled cry, I tore open the flap of my tent and ran blindly into the darkness, the echoes of that unearthly sound haunting my every step. Branches whipped at my face, and roots snagged at my ankles as I fled through the forest, my heart pounding in my ears. I didn't know where I was going, only that I had to get as far away from that unholy place as possible. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, I burst through the trees and stumbled onto a deserted highway. Gasping for breath, tears streaming down my face, I collapsed onto the cold asphalt, the sound of my ragged sobs echoing into the night. It was hours later when a passing motorist found me, trembling and disheveled by the side of the road. They offered me a ride to safety, their eyes wide with concern as I recounted the horrors I had witnessed in Whispering Pines. As we drove away from that cursed place, I couldn't shake the feeling that something malevolent still lurked in the shadows, waiting for its next unsuspecting victim. And as I glanced back one last time, I swore I could see a pair of glowing eyes watching from the darkness, their gaze filled with hunger and malice. Hi folks, I am Jason, and I've got a story to tell you. It's about Greenwood, the town I call home, and the strange things that happened when the solar eclipse came around. Now, let me tell you a bit about myself. I've always had this thing for space, astronomy, they call it. Ever since I was a kid, I've been fascinated by the stars, the planets, the whole shebang. So when news hit that we were gonna have this rare solar eclipse, I was over the moon, pun intended. But as the eclipse approached, things started getting weird. 
I'd be walking down the street, minding my own business, when I'd catch a glimpse of something out of the corner of my eye. Shadowy figures, darting between buildings, disappearing into thin air before I could get a good look at him. At first, I thought I was just seeing things. Maybe I'd been staying up too late, staring at the stars. But the more I saw them, the more I knew something wasn't right. So I started keeping track, scribbling down notes in a journal, trying to make sense of it all. Of course, when I tried telling folks about it, they just brushed it off. You've got an overactive imagination, Jason, they'd say. There's no such thing as shadowy figures lurking in Greenwood. Even my buddies, who were just as psyched about the eclipse as I was, thought I was losing it. But I couldn't shake the feeling that something was coming, something big. So when the day of the eclipse finally arrived, I was on edge. We all gathered at the park, waiting for the big event. And when it finally happened, man, it was like nothing I'd ever seen. The sky went dark, the air grew cold, and there it was. The shadowy figure, looming in the sky like a dark cloud. I tried to warn everyone, to get them to run, but nobody listened. They all thought I was just being dramatic. Even my buddies, who had seen the figures too, said I was overreacting. Next thing I know, I wake up the next day, and I'm dead. Well, not me, but my body is. I'm floating above it, looking down at myself lying there on the ground, eyes wide open in terror. I try to scream, to reach out to someone, anyone, but nobody can hear me. Now, folks in Greenwood are spooked. They don't know what to make of it, but I do. Those shadowy figures. They're real, and they're coming back. And this time, nobody's safe.